to the citizen channel you all stay safe and well on a special special edition of match day program watch you screw into a, a neutral ground, haven't we? So it won't be rated. I won't rate this, but I tell you, if I was rating it, it'd be very highly rated. This uh, program we're going to look at today, and reasonably priced as well. We charge just as much for our city programs at times, and yes, yeah, probably this is a bit better content than what we get at, at uh, the Etihad Stadium. So we'll have a look at the FA Cup semi final, of course. Uh, a very clever, clever design. I, I did have aspirations at one stage, as I'll say. I've I was involved in trying to get a city magazine off 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 the shelf and on onto the streets back in the late eighties. But obviously, even even into the two thousands and two tens, I was I was playing with ideas of doing a, uh, a magazine, not just for city, perhaps, but City and United, with a similar principle where one one side of it, this is the semi final program, is the United, not like a magazine style, and you turn over and they obviously. The other part of it, so it's half and half City and Sheffield United, but very cleverly done, and I had that sort of idea for a City magazine, a Manchester magazine with City sort of one, one way and United the other way, or even a pull-out section, so you had, uh, let's say, you know, 28 pages of United and 28 pages of City, and you could part it, but obviously there'd be a lot of rubbish strewn around the streets of Manchester, wouldn't they, with the United fans throwing the City bit away, and vice versa, although obviously if you've got mates who are City United fans, you could... You could uh, you could sort of give them that, couldn't you? But uh, anyway, that's that's all my little plan. So I did like I did like this way they'd done this. I thought it was quite clever. It just brought back some little memories for me as well. So we're gonna have a look through this magazine today because it is a magazine, really. Uh, it's not just a program; it's a program magazine. Uh, so we'll have a look through that. Please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. Great to have you on board. Everything city, past, present, and forever, of course. And yes, if you are pushing buttons and you press that little like button, say that these program vlogs don't you don't get the most likes, but uh, if you do like it, just just give us a give us a, a like, and we're trying to get up to about twenty. Try get get me to twenty, guys. Be much appreciated, right? Yeah, it's five pound, which is okay. It's all right. Sixty eight pages. We'll tell you how many ads are in it in a minute. An interesting split on the ads as well. We don't have as many ads in our part as Sheffield United. And there's other other little quirky things that uh, might not have appealed to Sheffield United fans as much as us, but uh, yeah, we'll talk about that as we go through it. I say it's basically a 50 50 split, but in the Sheffield United part, there is uh, sort of links to City city players, etc. So it's quite interesting. And it's a nice, I love that. I do enjoy that magazine type cover. I think it's brilliant and it's one of the best. Uh, obviously, I have a cover design thing, don't uh, top 10 at the end of the season. And uh, I think this will be will be up there. It might take some beating, actually, based on what I've seen so far this season. Right, in the city half, let's have a look what we've got. There's only just there's only five pages of ads. Obviously, it's a 68-page magazine. So there's 34 pages for City, in theory, and 34 pages for Sheffield United. There's, there's a couple of bits on Wembley and stuff like that in here as well, but it is mainly uh, all handed over to the clubs. So just five pages of promos in the city bit. City numbers is various FA stats numbers uh, as far as the FA Cup's concerned. Pep, obviously there's a Pep feature. There'll be a Sheffield United manager feature in there. But anything we do on here will be echoed, of course. Anything specific to cities is also specific to Sheffield United. There'll be an interview with one of their players. We've got Pep. We've got Julian, Julian Alvarez in interviewed. Wants to watch. Picks out six of the squad with a brief profile. Roll to Wembley pictures and match report summary on the on the four games we played up to that stage. City Slickers looks at our homegrown talent. Yes, Foden, Palmer and Lewis. Proving his worth looks at Stefan Ortega. Yeah, so he's sort of ignoring people like Haaland and KDB. It's nice to have sort of, not going to say the lesser known players, but it's nice, nice to concentrate on some of the, uh, the lower profile players, if you like. As Wembley celebrated 100 years, a great piece. Uh, I think Gary James did mention it on Twitter the night before. Uh, a little piece about Main Road, of course, Wembley and Main Road. 1923 is significant for both of those grounds. And of course, we would be selling our celebrating our 100 years if we'd stayed at Main Road in, in 2023 as well. So, yeah, a great piece by, by Gary James. About the big crowds that were at Main Road, which obviously uh, compared uh, favourably with what, what they were getting at Wembley, of course, which is a little bit bigger. But, uh, of course, uh, uh, 
uh, main role was the Hamden, Hamden of the South, wasn't it? Or the Wembley of the North, depending on which way you look at it, Scotland or, but obviously it was more more uh, designed on Hamden Park than Wembley, although it was called the Wembley of the North. There's a general piece on the history of Wembley itself as well, which obviously uh, there's a little snippets of some couple of city pictures, etc. but it's just generally about Wembley. And the final piece in the city bit is a, a, a foot in both camps, it's called, which covers Keith Curl, who, of course, who also played for Sheffield United. I'll read you a little excerpt from the Q&A with him uh, before, we, before we finish today. Right, on to the Sheffield section. Uh, was there anything in, in the Sheffield section of interest to City fans? Well, there certainly was. Um, it, very interesting. The seven pages of ads and promos, so there's a couple of pages more uh, in the Sheffield section. And, of course, uh, yeah, there was plenty. Of, as I said, they copied the sort of City stuff with the player interview, the manager profiles, etc., etc. But we get a nice image of Tommy Doyle celebrating after scoring the quarterfinal against Blackburn, a double piece. I think City's image was uh, Alvarez scoring uh, in the 6-0 against Burnley. And then there's a great piece, yeah, on the low knees. So, obviously, it looks at Tommy Doyle and James Maxey, obviously, in relation to Sheffield United. But, of course, City do get a mention. And, of course, they're both those players are missing for Sheffield today because, obviously, they were on loan from City. But it is a great piece on Tommy Doyle and James Maxey about them. Another City link, an article on a, a very young-looking, a guy who could... Uh, put the crosses in very accurately and defend very well. And this is a little piece on Kyle Walker. Perhaps his crossing ability uh, stumbled a little bit when he left Sheffield to come to us. But, uh, yeah, there's a, another great article on, on Kyle Walker. So very, very interesting to City fans. And then Man on the Mic as well is obviously now a commentator, of course, Michael Brown, who played for Sheffield United, but obviously links to City. So, again, in the article, there's bits, bits of interest for City fans. So... Yeah, it's a bit bit of a cheat, I suppose. I mean, I just thought, I mean, if you look at it on a split, it's not really 50-50. I would say it's probably 65-35 in favour of City. So if you're a Sheffield United fan and you, you, you read through this, let me know what you thought. But uh, as far as City fans are concerned, uh, this this programme, excellent, excellent value for money, uh, I think. And uh, certainly some, some interesting stuff on Sheffield as well, some good stats. I mean, I think they've won the FA Cup. Uh, I think the last time they won the FA Cup was about in the mid-20s, and they first won it in 1899, so certainly before we did, and I think they won it four times. So there's some, some stuff in there on Sheffield that's of interest to City fans, or general football uh, fans anyway. So, yeah, I, I have no complaints about this. I thought it was an excellent, excellent programme for what it was. So we'll go back to that little Keith Curl thing, and just uh, before we go and read you a couple of things. What I did notice in this, there's no... There's no kids, uh, a bit disappointed. There's no kids section, if you like. There's no little quizzes or spot the balls or, or anything like that. Uh, there's no quiz in general, which was uh, a bit unusual. Uh, of course, we'll rectify that, I think, for the final programme. But I think the semi finals, I think more kids probably do go to the semi finals and get to the final. So. Uh, just an interesting point for the FA if you're putting your semi final programmes together. It's nice to have a little little uh, kids section for, for the fans as well, which uh, they missed out on in this one. But uh, it's always well worth putting one of those in as well. Anyway, you've been told now for next time, so there you go. Right, on to uh, Keith Curl. Uh, of course, Keith Curl, household name when it comes to both Manchester City and Sheffield United. Here, the manager, landlord recalls his time at both clubs. Landlord, there you go, he's the landlord. Uh, yeah, so he was asked just to go back to 1991 firstly and your club record moved from Wimbledon to Manchester City. Did you feel any pressure with the £2.5 million price tag that saw you join City? Yes, there was a pressure that came with it. Uh, what helped me was having the advice and support of Peter Reid, who was a Manchester City manager at the time. He continually reminded me, you don't need to look like the most expensive defender, you just need to be a good defender, which is fair enough. You made over 200 appearances for City and experienced back-to-back fifth-place finishes during your time at the club. You must have a lot of fond memories of City, he was asked. He said, I remember being given the captain's armband. That was a very proud moment for me. Walking out of main role for the first time and hearing the fans sing Blue Moon was incredible. Incredible, the sort of thing that makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck. I love Main Road and I love my five years at Manchester City. When I joined City, the club was going through something of a transitional period. It's just a shame they made a change of manager as that transition was taking place. I genuinely believe if Peter Reid had been maintained at the club, he would have been able to get the club up to the levels it could achieve. He knew a rebuild had to take place. 
and he bloodied some excellent young players like Steve Lomas, Michael Brown, etc. I think if Pisa had been given time, I don't think the club would have got relegated, and we certainly wouldn't have seen the demise of the club which happened after his de- departure. So he asked, he asked him some other couple of questions there. Then he, he sort of goes back later in the piece and he says, uh, how do you reflect on City season today? And Keith Curl said, the journey has been, I've been on as a player that is, is, is incredible. I've been invited back to a few City games. It's always a real privilege. It's nice to be appreciated for your part in a club's journey. I love watching City play and not only as a former player, but as a football lover. The mindset, the management there is refreshing. No matter how big a player is, the manager wants you to play in a particular way or you don't play. No player is bigger than the manager. And his final question, he was asked to reflect on his own managerial journey so far, yeah, not overly, not 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 setting, you know, he's not he's not up there with the old Eddie Howes, etc. Is he? But uh, this is what he answered to that anyway. How do how do you reflect on your managerial journey so far? He said, "I love winning games. I love turning football clubs around. I hate getting the sack." There's a need that I've used, there's a word that I've used a lot, which is honesty. I manage with honesty, and I think that's the best way to get the best out of players and the best out of teams. I don't think there are many people who would have taken on their Oldham and Hartlepool jobs like I did recently, but in both situations, when I left them, they were left in a better situation than when I arrived. I like to get back into management, it's what I do. I relish the opportunity to get the best out of people. I also have a property business, I'm a registered professional landlord. There you go. I thought it was a landlord of a pub when I read the, the start, which I enjoy, but it doesn't give me the buzz like football does. Every day is different in football. No training session, no match is ever the same. Well, there you go. little piece on there, Keith Kill. Great programme. Uh, yeah, uh, well worth it. Nice uh, nice feel to it as well. Nice, nice uh, feel. Doesn't doesn't break up too much when you push the, the uh, pages down, etc., etc. Anyway, so let me know, guys, if you if you got it, what you thought of it. I think it's uh, excellent. As I say, that's got to be got to be in the running for the best cover of the season so far. There might be others that I've forgotten about now, but uh, certainly certainly better than most of the city owned program ones. Anyway, so uh, hopefully we'll be featuring that again at the end of the season when we do our little program cover, little little bit of fun program, the best program cover of the season. So. Join me for that and let me know what you thought of this, guys. If you went down and you got the programme, let me know what you thought. So I, I'm, I was quite impressed. Uh, so let's see, let's see how the final one is, eh? Although we'll have to suffer that rabble, won't we? To see you. Uh, I won't be reading much of their, their, uh, their, their half. I uh, don't know how they'll do it. They probably won't do it this, this way. They'll probably mix it in and mix and match it again. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Until we meet again, that's one thing, don't we? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Bye for now.